Welcome back to the Solutions to the Questions of the Month series of videos. This time I will deal with the questions that were asked by our YouTube channel community in February 2013. And as usual, I will present the answers using the active board behind me, whose content can be downloaded via the e-lecture library on the Virtual Linguistics Campus. Here is the first question. Is it true that a linking R can't occur after E and U, and that this has something to do with a hiatus? Well, in order to answer this question, which certainly focuses on received pronunciation, we should first of all define the context required for the effect of linking. What do we need? We need a word that phonemically ends in a vowel and involves a final or penultimate orthographical R. So, here are two words, and in isolation, their orthographical R is not realized, so we have mother and here. But if the next word starts with a vowel, we get mother and father, or here it is. To come back to our question, we first of all need to define words or contexts with a final monothongal E and U, and at the same time, these contexts should involve an orthographical R. So we need contexts of this kind, final E plus R, final U plus R. But such contexts simply do not exist. In contexts with final U and final E, we have other linking elements that gap the hiatus. For example, the glide Y, in we all and the labial vela glide as in you all. So this explains why we do not get a linking R in these contexts. Here is the next question. I do not understand why there's a problem with I promise I'll come to your party. Please clarify. Well in the e-lecture pragmatics and overview I said that the act of promising normally involves that the addressee wants the promise to be realized. So we want this smiling face over here. Now imagine you are a student and I'm your professor. Do you really want me to be at your party? Many students would rather dispense with me, in which case the speech act could be understood as a threat rather then, as a promise. But if you were looking forward to my presence, then you would like the promise to be realized and we would have a true promise. Thus, various conditions have to be met before a speech act can be said to have been properly performed. Basically these happiness, felicity or appropriacy conditions ensure that the proper context is matched with the proper words. So, so there's not a problem with promise but just the option to understand this speech act in more than the standard way. Here is a completely different question, a more general question. Do you offer PhD programs in applied linguistics online? Well, we feel extremely honored by the fact that the users of our channel are interested in doing an online PhD with us. In fact, we do offer PhD programs at our department of the University of Marburg that you can see over here, but there are no particular classes you would have to attend if you are interested in such a program. So if you wish, that is some sort of online program. However, in order to apply for a PhD with us, you need a profound linguistic background. For example, a master degree in linguistics. Well, and then secondly, your research project should satisfy our goals. It should fit into our goals. 
language and linguistics, web technology and digital teaching and learning scenarios in the 21st century applied to languages, language studies or linguistics. By the way, if I may add this, we have an online on the job master program. Anyone interested? Well, there's more information on the homepage of the virtual linguistics campus, which are displayed over here. Here is another question. Well, it's not really a question. Now, this is a highly interesting thing. It relates to the video, to our video about the virtual linguistics campus educational scenario, which we refer to as the inverted classroom mastery model. Up to now, we thought that the roots of this model do not go back further than the year 2000, when Maureen Lake, Glenn Platt and Michael Treglia published their inverted classroom essay in the Journal of Economic Education. But this comment here pointed out to us that there are even further roots. The inverted classroom mastery model is an enhanced modified Keller paradigm used in the United States in selected universities in the late 1970s and early 80s. Now when we read this comment we tried to find more details and then eventually we found the publication by a man called Fred Keller, Goodbye Teacher. And if you examine Fred Keller's ideas, there are indeed some sort of precursors to the inverted classroom model using material that was available at the time for the self-guided phase of content acquisition. Film, audio, field trips, pictures, and so on and so forth. So we are extremely grateful for comments of this type. They assure the quality of what we are doing and they trigger new ideas. A more down-to-earth question, question is this one. Where can I find the interactive consonantal chart you showed in this video? By this video, of course, the video about consonants is meant. Now, in order to use the consonantal chart, and a large number of free options, you have to have an account on the Virtual Linguistics Campus, which is of course free. So please register first. Visit our homepage and create your free VLC account. Click on this button and then here you create your free account. Once you've created your account, log in with your freely created access data, normally your email address and a password. And then after login, you will see your personalized VLC start site. And on the start site, you have various options. Among them, the VLC assessment showcase, the e-lecture library where you find our videos at the board content, and last but not least, the VLC Toolbox. And within the Toolbox, you will find a link labeled Consonants. Just click on it. The rest is self-explanatory. Well, that's it for now. And as usual, I'd like to thank all our subscribers and users. Here are those whose questions I tried to answer. Their questions and comments contribute to the quality of our channel and are helpful for all of us. Well, and comments like this one over here are particularly motivating. Georgia Jimenez, I hope I pronounce her name correctly, writes, Sir, thank you for this very precise explanation. I'll use it and share it in my applied linguistic class. I hope I can report it the way you did it. Well, this is exactly what we want to achieve with our videos. Use them in your class, use them pre to prepare certain topics, and if they help to improve your grades, well, that's even better. Well, and if we make mistakes, you'll be there in order to correct us, and that's exactly what we want. Motivation 
and quality assurance by the community. So see you again in the next questions of the month video or in any of our e-lectures. Until then, have a nice time.